Ed Bud here and I'm back with an update for you that I'm really pleased to be doing about the Adidas Ultra Boost 20. Greetings fellow runners and shoe enthusiasts and I'm back with a really important update for you, one that I really wanted to do as quickly as I could about the Adidas Ultra Boost 20. Main topic of today really is going to be about customization of shoes. Please let me know in the comments guys what the craziest customization you've had to make to a running shoe is or was what you had to do just to get the shoe working for you so you could get some miles into it. I'm really keen to read some of the crazy stories you runners must have from your years of experience. As you well know, if you've seen my initial review of the Ultra Boost 20, I really didn't have the best time of it on my initial run. Some really bad blisters had appeared on the outer edges of my heels and my initial run of six miles at about seven minutes per mile pace. I really wasn't pleasantly surprised to see those blisters magically appear after this run. They were painful and they were unsightly. And it really, really dented my initial enjoyment of getting these shoes. I've been really looking forward to them. Um, I'm a bit of a fan of the Ultra Boost lineup. From a casual perspective as well, I really enjoyed wearing the version 4s, uh, the V4s. These have kind of been butchered a little bit. Put a lot of miles into these. Like a kid at Christmas, I tore open the box, but by the end of the day, I was crying into my mince pie, wounded and very deflated. But alas, the Ultra Boost 20s have risen like a phoenix from the flames. I think I've found the problem, and I'm gonna furnish you with the details. So on inspecting the shoes, I kind of was pulling them apart, taking the laces off, kind of moving them around, kind of crushing the backs of the heels in a little bit, trying to figure out what was wrong with them. After some sort of prodding and messing around with them, I kind of took the insoles out and realized that the back of the insole of the shoe is incredibly cupped. I have the insole here, and the very sort of back end of the insole was really, really cupped. But kind of right around the heel, it just seemed really, really unnecessary. I got it into my mind that this was definitely the issue with the shoe. I just couldn't see any other reason why it would have caused those problems on my initial run. My heel just really wasn't getting on with that insole. So there was only one thing for it. There's only one thing to do. I got my scissors out and I started snipping. I initially removed some of the outer edge of the insole. So it was more flat on that back edge. And that instantly started to give me some better results. I kept marrying my foot up against the insole and then just making a few smaller kind of cuts, taking away a few pieces from the back of it and instantly the shoe just started feeling better on foot. It took a little while to get it right, but certainly removing that kind of cupped sort of feeling around the edge of the insole just made the shoe a completely different kettle of fish. A little test run and some spray adhesive later to make sure that those insoles didn't move around and we had a working Ultra Boost 20. Working situation now, I can get on and get some miles into that shoe, push them up towards my usual kind of target of around about 100 miles to give you my more honest and informed opinions after a more considerable length of time. Since I've made those changes, I've managed to get out for a couple of runs in them, one at about five miles at eight minutes per mile pace, and then running some errands earlier today, around about four miles at eight minutes 59 per mile pace. So one of them being more my kind of it's easy recovery kind of pace, and obviously today, I just had to get out and run some errands. Uh, but the shoes felt fantastic. I had no pain whatsoever in my foot. Um, I was running around today with a big rucksack on filled with all my sort of work gear and other odds and ends. And that slowed me down a little bit, but I was quite glad for a little bit of recovery after two faster speed efforts during the earlier part of the week. Call me crazy, but on subsequent runs in this shoe, I've started hearing things. Talking of hearing things, there's a couple of albums I've been listening to recently that I was going to tell you about. I picked this album up towards the latter part of 2019. It's the debut album from The White Stripes. I was very lucky when The White Stripes first appeared on the scene back in sort of 2000, 2001, to be able to see them uh, in Bristol. It's a fantastic experience. They were backed by the band Von Bondies, which I don't believe are together. I think they've disbanded but the White Stripes were absolutely fantastic. And getting this album and listening to it on some of my runs, it really reminded me of just how great the band were. This is very much down and dirty, kind of garage rock, not pulling any punches. It's raw and very, very exciting, very visceral kind of sound. 
I know as they kind of progressed onwards, uh, the White Stripes kind of included more and more instruments, but listening back to this album, it kind of reminds me of just what I loved about the band in the first place. You know, the front three tracks on this, Jimmy the Explorer, Stop Breaking Down, and The Big Three Stole My Baby, absolutely fantastic. Stick them on your turntable, crank up the amplifier, and you're in for a good time. When I was younger, I used to own this album on CD, but I couldn't quite resist purchasing it on vinyl when I got the chance. There's some really fantastic alternative versions taken from a John Peel session, I think. And it's probably the first five or six tracks on the first side. And they're absolutely fantastic. So much better in terms of production than the versions that appear on their Smith's debut album. If you do get a chance to listen to this album, go for it. It really does show just how great and kind of energetic and driving the band were. The sound was really great. Such a simple sound, drums, bass, and Johnny Marr on the guitar, it's definitely worth a listen. I think that first debut album just sounded sort of really weedy in terms of production. It just didn't really have any sort of guts to it. But I think the versions on Hateful of Hollow really make up for that. Aha, look who's appeared, it's the beast. How you doing, sweetheart? You okay, come in to help me, eh? Come on then. Let's get back on track. So I told you I started hearing things which weren't either of these albums. There was something strange going on in the midsole of this shoe. While I was out running on that uh, initial run after the modifications I'd made, it kind of sounded like I was running on bubble wrap. Some of you might find that quite a satisfying sound, but it was really freaking me out. I wondered what was going on, especially when you're running through a sort of tree-lined area in the dark, and all you can hear is somebody popping bubble wrap nearby. I'm not sure if this is a break-in issue, if that's inherent with this shoe. I don't know, it's kind of odd. All I can think of is perhaps something to do with the boost material and perhaps the outsole material, kind of the way they've been fused together, perhaps. I certainly didn't ever notice that in the version 4 here. It has that boost material, it has the continental rubber, albeit a much thinner spread of that rubber. The sound was happening both on a road and concrete and on sort of compacted trails. It just kept getting that popping sound. Yeah, think kind of like popping candy, if you've ever had that. Rice Krispies and bubble wrap. I initially thought it could be sort of twigs or sticks breaking underfoot, and then I realized that there weren't any there. It's kind of a little bit like as well, polystyrene kind of tearing or breaking. I'm not sure if this kind of coincides also with the shoe feeling a little more malleable and pliable, perhaps. It feels a little bit more forgiving underfoot now, after 20 or so miles. Another weird, issue I found with this shoe, not really an issue, it's just an observation I suppose, is that debris and water are getting in under this torsion bar here. So the area where it's exposed, I had some sort of dirt, debris and water. I mean there's some stuff right up underneath there. I don't know how it's got there. How does that get there? It's really weird. It really squelches when there's water in there. Uh, you can really feel it underfoot. This is quite a heavy shoe anyway. As it started to get wet, I could hear it just squelching around in this sort of torsion bar area. I think my main worry with that is that water's gonna kind of get in at one point underneath the outsole rubber and cause a lot of issues. I know a uh, young chap, Joe Bennett, has had some problems with the outsole of his uh, V4 Ultra Boost, literally just coming off and stuff getting in under that. Once you've got some debris and water under that rubber outsole, it's just gonna wreck it completely and sooner or later just come off. So let's hope that that's not the case with the Ultra Boost 20s. Certainly though, this shoe does feel a little bit more rigid and slightly less forgiving than the version four Ultra Boost that I wore back in 2018. It could be perhaps a symptom of that thicker continental rubber outsole on this shoe, but I have to say the traction is fantastic. There's been a lot of rain in the local area over the last couple of days and this shoes felt good on both of those initial runs after I made the modifications. Traction of the outsole rubber is really great, even on some compacted trails. I know Andy, the Forrester Dean runner, he's been getting some good miles in on the Ultra Boost 19, and he's commented as well that he feels it's a great shoe even on some of those trails that he runs on. I'm inclined to agree with him. I think this is quite a good all-round shoe really if you're not looking for something that's going to go ridiculously fast could well be for you so i really don't think the insole has helped this shoe for me initially now i've made those modifications it has improved 
the feel and comfort of the shoe quite considerably. I think perhaps having a very thick insole in this shoe is just unnecessary now. They've got so much boost material there. Perhaps having something a little thinner along the lines of the Adios 4, which I've really enjoyed running in, could improve this shoe quite a lot. So I'm glad to get some miles onto the books in the Adidas Ultra Boost 20 at last. It kind of reminds me a little bit of being a young lad at Christmas many, many years ago and receiving a lightsaber from my dad. But unfortunately, the lightsaber had a yellow bulb in it. And of course, Luke's lightsaber was blue. So some crying and some tears and a blue quality street sweet wrapper later and all was forgiven. And I was a happy guy once again. Please comment below and let me know the craziest modifications you've had to make to a shoe to get it working for you. Please remember to like, share it and subscribe down here in the bottom corner. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.